Hi there, this is Eshu. I'm the abbot here at Zen West Buddhist Society. This Living Zen podcast is just one of the many resources we've created at Zen West to make Zen practice and training more available and accessible to people all over the world. Instructional videos, printable resources, and much, much more are also available on our website at www.zenwest.ca. If you're a regular listener, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop me an email at office at zenwest.ca and let me know who you are, how you got started, and what brought you to Zen. Everything we make available in person and online at Zen West is only possible because of the support of our members and associates, people like you. If the efforts of our community are making a difference in your life, I'd like to invite you to show your support and take part in making it happen by becoming an associate or member of the Zen West Sangha. You can do this by clicking the Join Us tab on our website at www.zenwest.ca. Thank you for your support, and thanks for listening. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> uh, welcome. Thank you all for coming, making it down here. Uh, I haven't sat in Victoria proper for a long time. And uh, it's really a quiet city, actually, for a city. I mean, it's nice to hear the cars going by a little bit, but uh, all things considered, it's pretty quiet for a city. Um, I really like this new space. Uh, not just because it works, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> uh, it's easy to find and uh, centrally located and lots of free parking and all that kind of stuff. It's really good. Uh, but just uh, sitting here, uh, it has a weight. We're sitting in a funeral home. Uh, and I think that that's really a wonderful thing. There's a long tradition in Buddhism of doing practice uh, in close proximity to graveyards and cemeteries and charnel grounds. Um, since time immemorial, this practice, one of its uh, most uh, important uh, fundamental teachings is that of impermanence. Uh, in the F Buddha's first talk, uh, the realization of his disciple Kandana is that which is of the nature to be born is of the nature to die. This is a great realization. It sounds simple. It sounds... Uh, almost trite. Of course, everything that is of the nature to be born is of the nature to die. But I think that this is a realization or a simple principle that's apparent. It's uh, constantly uh, we're being given evidence of this simple principle. But we do everything in our power all the time, every moment of our lives, to kind of forget about that. When we're going about our lives, we're always living like we're going to live forever. When we make the choices that we make in our lives, the directions that we choose, very often they're not based on this simple idea that we're not going to go on forever. And so for me, coming to this place to sit, there's a kind of very, even from the moment that we come in the door here, even from the moment that we really see the building, I find, at least for me, there's a kind of wait, a kind of uh, call to be present. We're coming into a funeral home, and so we're not anywhere near as rowdy as we're uh, somewhere else. There's a quietness. There's a, a, a sincerity in the space. And this is one of the real values of um, practicing in sacred space. Sacred space is something that I think is really uh, being lost at an amazing rate. Uh, certainly, I, um, I think that it's important to use space, use space uh, efficiently and effectively. I'm not a big fan of giant churches that sit empty uh, you know, six days a week so that they can be used one day a week. But I'm also not a big fan of uh, over-purposing. 
spaces, practice spaces especially. I'm not a big fan of actually the changes that are being made at the chapel at the University of Victoria to put in office space and everything like this because I just feel like more and more there are fewer and fewer places where you can just go and be. And just sitting here for a few minutes this evening, uh, I feel like this is a very uh, solid space of practice. The Buddha taught that of all of the footprints, that of the elephant is king. And likewise, of all contemplations, the contemplation of death is king. As we bring ourselves to practice, as we bring ourselves to engage in this uh, practice of dissolving into our lives, dissolving into the unfolding activity that is this cosmos and is the content of our lives, it's important that we remember death, that we remember that we're not going to make it out of this alive, that we we don't know from where our death is coming. We don't know when our death is coming. Our death doesn't concern itself with whether we're in the middle of something or not. And so as we practice, as we apply ourselves to mindfulness, as we apply ourselves to engaging in each and every activity of our lives, from the perspective of Zen, it's very important for us to remember this, to have this really front and uh, uh, center in our mind so that as we're engaging in something, we recognize that what I'm engaging in right now, whether it's uh, sitting or whether it's walking meditation or whether it's washing my dishes or driving my car, this, this may be the last thing that I ever do So how do I want to go about engaging in that activity? Do I want to do it in a distracted way where I'm making lists about the next thing and the next thing and what I want to pursue and what I'm trying to get away from? Or do I want to uh, give myself, completely give myself to the activity that's unfolding in front of me? I have no power, I have no influence over the activities, the events that have taken place in my past. I can't change them, I can't erase them, I can't avoid the impact that they've had on me. And I can't dabble in the future, I can't manipulate objects or people or uh, interactions in the future. The only place where I have any influence, the only place where I can act and engage and make relationship and be is just in this moment that's unfolding in front of me always. And so our practice is simply to pay attention to that activity as it's unfolding. As we take up this posture and sit, we are asked to just pay attention to the physical sensation of the body, to feel yourself in your body, to notice the different uh, aches and pains or positive sensation, tingles and warmth and all that. To pay attention without uh, trying to avoid anything, to pay attention without trying to indulge or... uh, sort of get overly involved with anything. Not just physically, but uh, mentally and emotionally. To be aware of thoughts and feelings, images as they're coming up, without getting uh, pulled away by them, without trying to push them away or avoid them, without being... Uh, sort of jumping on a train of thought and and taking off into outer space or wherever it is your thoughts want to take you. We engage with the activity of the breath, paying attention to the breath as it moves in and out of our body. We pay attention 
to the light and to the color and to the movement that's taking place around us. We pay attention to the smells that are happening around us, the sounds that are happening all around us. All of this we pay attention to uh, with a very broad perspective, opening up so that we can take it all in equally. And the only thing that we're doing in this activity is being here, attending your life. And what we find is doing that is actually pretty damn difficult. As we sit here and pay attention to our life, innumerable things come up. Innumerable sensations come up that we want to avoid or indulge in. Innumerable feelings we don't want to have or that we want to have more of. And this practice that we're engaged in, connecting with our breath, is just to simply pay attention and notice when we're uh, drifting off one way or the other. Drifting off thinking about the past. Drifting off fantasizing about the future. It's not good. It's not bad. It, it's just not the activity of your life. It's not the activity that's unfolding right before you in this very moment. And so our practice is simply just to bring ourselves back, to become aware. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming. Or, oh, I'm worrying. Oh, I'm, I'm focusing on this pain in my leg. And just to gently bring ourselves back to awareness of our breath, to bring ourselves back to center, to bring ourselves back to the dynamic activity of our life that's unfolding before us in this very moment. It isn't complicated. It's very simple. It's very simple, but it's also not very easy. This activity of bringing ourselves back, bringing ourselves back, and bringing ourselves back, done in this kind of environment where we're supported to do this by a group of other people who are all engaged in the same practice, is a wonderful support. And it's a wonderful place where we can take this opportunity to do practice. This is why we call it Zen practice. Because where this ability really becomes valuable is out there in our everyday lives as we're walking down the street, as we're doing our work and our jobs, as we're making relationship, teaching our children, leading our communities, sharing with people in the world. Each of us... uh, is intimately connected with this cosmos as it's unfolding. But for the most part, we're not paying attention. We're not aware of it at all. So this simple practice of coming back, coming back because there's nowhere else for us to be. There's nowhere else for us to act. There's no other place where we... uh, can act, can do, or there's nowhere else that we can simply uh, be, simply manifest. You can do a lot of things in your life. You can make a whole lot of money, or you can uh, have a whole lot of people to love, or you can get a whole lot of education. But for me, if there's one thing I wish for you, it is simply that each of us learns how to be in our lives, learns how to engage in our lives, learns how to genuinely and wholeheartedly live our lives. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.